seems to me folks have more trouble mixing color uh, than just about any other skill in painting. This person says, could you show maybe five references of beaches of different sands and just show how you choose the colors for them? And then she goes on to say, I get myself in a real mess, especially with earth colors. Well, we can take those earth colors and show you how to do it. When it comes to mixing color, I prefer a scientific method. It takes the guess out. And I have a little method, uh, a little process I can show you. I've shown you in other quick tips too, but for this one, I have a little process, process I can take you through. I think if you use it, you can mix any color you're looking at. But we're going to focus on sands. Now, the person asked for five different kinds of sands. Well, you know, there are more than five, and I just found here some samples to show you how sand might appear. Now, there's going to be the color of the sand itself. There's going to be the area in which the sand is located, the time of day, the kind of weather. All kinds of things are going to go into the color that you see when you look at any particular sand. You see here, we're looking at a sand, uh, a beach that's sort of warm. And here we're seeing a beach that's sort of cool. Well, we have two other examples here, and if we compare them, we can see in this one, this one feels a little bit um, kind of between, in between warm and cool. It's so neutral, you can't really tell uh, exactly what color it is. So if you compare it to here and here, it's, it's a little bit more like this one. Then this one is a little bit more like this, but maybe we see some of this in it too. So we see some variety, of, some uh, variations of things happening there. So what I want to do as just start with one and then I'll show you how we could take that same principle and get all the colors that we would need or, or start with all the colors that we need for doing these particular sands. Now whenever you're mixing color you see a color you want to mix that color. The first step that if you will do this and I'm not going to say this is not a rule but this is something I've found that works for you every time mix the value first. Mix, don't, uh, you can look at it and kind of gauge to yourself in the, ra the range of color that you're seeing. Uh, you can use the color wheel to kind of guide you in that range. So it, let's start with this one. If we're looking at this range, it's certainly not green, it's certainly not blue, and it's certainly, well, maybe lean, beginning leaning a little bit towards red violet but maybe we get a feeling that we might start with orange. So we know we'll start with one of the warm colors. All right, this is where when you make that decision, is it warm or is it cool? Find one of those warm colors to start with and then get its value. So I could. I could start with yellow-orange. Uh, I have a, a high saturation, highly saturated yellow-orange in my palette. I could start with that. Uh, if I hold yellow-orange here, I can see some relationship between the yellow-orange on my color wheel and this. I could start with a red. I could start with a red-orange. You see, I can start almost anywhere. I wouldn't want to start with yellow necessarily, but I can start almost anywhere in here. And I'll show you why you can start with that kind of range and how you can go. All right, so let's just say that I'm going to start with an, with a with an orange and so I'll pull some red down like this. That's the cadmium red light I have on my palette. And this is the cadmium yellow deep which comes out as a yellow orange. So I'll just mix those two together and start out with an orange. And um, all right, so I've got that mixed now. Now that let me add a little bit more of that yellow uh, cadmium yellow deep into it and get it a little bit more like a yellow orange. All right, that is a good place to start. Okay, now if I hold my palette knife against the picture here, I don't see that. But what do I know about color? First of all, this is a neutral color. 
we, we don't see it as bright, brilliant, saturated hue, uh, we're going to see it as neutral. And most colors we see in nature are neutral. And what does that mean? It means that we need the complement of that color in order to get it close to what we're seeing. Uh, but before we can do that, if we don't have the value of the color of, to start out with, then we're not going to be able to see what we've got. And so that's the reason we start with value first. So let's see, do I have the same value? Uh, putting it on the back of my palette knife and hold it here, and if I squint, this seems a little bit dark. In fact, one way I can find out is to use the value scale. So you have two tools, if you will use them for reading color, uh, they will help guide you towards mixing color. Now, when you first are getting the knack of how to mix color scientifically, there's nothing wrong with using tools to help you. You eventually reach the point you'll be able to see it without those tools. Or if I put the value scale here, like this, I'm seeing that this is very close. As I say, is it this light? Well, it's almost that light right there. It's almost, it's very, very light. Now, if I take the value scale and, uh, rather, if I make uh, a test strip with this orange, like this, and then I hold it next to the value scale and squint. Now, it is more, it, it leans more towards value 4, between kind of value 3 and value 4. If you squint, you can see that it's difficult to see the saturated colors when you squint because they are so bright in their hue. But uh, so, uh, but but if you squint, it usually fall. They fall together. So the, what we need to do now is to raise the value of that orange before we do another thing. We need to raise the value of the orange so it's close to the value we're looking at here. For that, I'm going to use white, and I'll start with white since that color is so very light, and just pull a little bit of that orange into the white. Not much because why not much? because I found that it is a very, very light value. So when it's a very, very light value, you can start out with white and gradually add color into it. Now let's see, do I have the, the value I need of that color? And one way I can find that uh, is to use the test strip idea. Now you can also use the back of your palette knife. You see I'm very close when I hold the palette knife up here like that. I'm very close to that value. Um, or you can just cut strips of paper like this and take the palette knife and pull the color towards to the uh, end and hold it like that. And when I squint, those blend together very well. I can tell I'm in the right value range for that color. Okay, the next step, what do I do to get it neutral? What do I get, do to get it the color I'm seeing right there? I go back to the color wheel. Now when I'm uh, looking at the color wheel, I see that I really have an orange here. I've mixed yellow orange and red uh, red orange, and I've really ended up with an orange there. Blue is the complement of orange. So you you can always use the complement, or you can use colors that have a complement in them to get the colors neutral, neutralize them. So the one color I have, I do have the ultramarine blue in my palette. So I'll just pull ultramarine blue right underneath the orange here, and you see how very very dark it is. If I put just ultramarine blue in here, it's going to change it in two ways. It's going to change the value, and it's going to change, well, of course it's going to change the intensity, but it's going to change the value too. I don't want the values to change, so what I need to do is value correct. Now that is one of the keys in, uh, for mixing the color you're looking at. One of the keys that you can always remember that will help you every time. Otherwise, you may be trying this, trying that, trying this, and try pulling your hair out and not ever get what you really are looking at. So value correct means I get that ultramarine blue the same value as this orange. So I'll start out with white because it's very light. It needs to be in the same value range, so I'm going to add just a little bit of ultramarine blue. So... Now, not quite enough. It's still too light. Whoops, held it right there. Okay, a little bit more. Ultramarine blue and white. And be willing to go slow and pay attention to what you're doing. If you're slapdash uh, in your color mixing, then you're going to get slapdash results. 
So this seems to me to be in pretty much the same value range. Perhaps could stand to be just a little bit darker. Perhaps just a little bit. Now, all right, let's see now. Now we've got the same. These two are pretty much in the same value range. We should be able to see if that's going to work. So I can start uh, by t picking ultramarine blue up on the palette knife, put it beside the color. If you slap it right into the color, then you lose control of what you're getting. So let's put it beside the color, uh, the, 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 uh, the orange, and let's begin to pull it into the orange. And keep an eye on it, look at it, and watch how it's changing while you're doing that. Now you can see it's already changing. All right, now I can test that change. I can use the back of the palette knife. See, I'm almost there. So what I'll do is to get a test strip, and let's just test it. Put a little of this color on the back of the uh, on our test strip. Hold it next to the sand. You see how very very close that is. It seems I might in some places it seems just about right. In other places it seems that it might be a little bit too neutral. Uh, and it's something else too. And this will happen. Uh, I'll talk about that something else in just a sec. I want to add just a little bit more of the orange back to it for the other side of the test strip and hold that up here. There, you see we're in that neighborhood. But it seems it's going a little bit green. Now that's the kind of thing you need to discern when you're mixing color. When you put those two complements together, discern, uh, is, is it working? It is becoming more neutral, but is it leaning, it does it have a bias towards one side or the other? So that begins to feel a little bit more green, which tells me that this ultramarine blue uh, is, that the ultramarine blue needed to be a little bit more purple. The ultramarine blue is not quite what we need. So purple means red. That means that we could take any red, if it's too green, if it's leaning towards green, this, Green, here, complement red. So you should be able to take any red, value correct it, add it into this mixture, and that should work. Now that's the theory, that's the science. I'm going to get a little bit more mixture here. That's the way the, sci the scientific approach to mixing color. Uh, so you start with an unknown. You begin to put together what you do know and you begin to gradually reach the results that you're after. So I'm going to go in, I'm just going to go back into the cadmium red light. It's what I started out with here. Need to value correct it first. So let's pull some white here and we will value correct it. Now yeah, that cadmium red light is very, very high tinting strength. So uh, it's not going to take much of the light into the white to value correct it. So I, I don't want it darker. I want the, pretty much the same value. All right. Now I think, I think I'm pretty much in the same value range. Now here's what I'm going to do. Put a little bit of that red in there and then I'm going to just pull it to the edge. Not the whole mixture. It's going to take it, let's mix it a little bit more than that. Not the whole mixture though, because I just want enough to be able to test it. All right, you can see now that's made a slight change. Now let's see if that's closer to the color we're looking at in that sand of that particular beach. So test it with my test strip. You see it's very, very close now. See how much closer it got. So it seems it needs to be a variation of those mixtures together. So let's pull some more of the original mixture. Now what you're going to find with color, see there you are right there. That's the color. What you're going to find with mixing color or when you have things like beaches or things that seem to be the same color all the way across or in the whole area, they're never that way. There's always a change in value 
you can look at that because of the way the light's hitting and the way the uh, way shadows affect the beach um, or whatever you're looking at. There's always going to be some sort of gradation. It's going to either be a gradation that goes uh, from the one color to another or a gradation that goes from one value to the other. So you never, you, 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 if you try to make the whole thing the same color, it's going to be flat. So you're going to have some variation, but if you will use this that principle, you'll see how you can cause that, or how you can come up with the exact color you're looking at. Now, if we want this color, we see we have already what we need. We have the components for neutral. Uh, so if we wanted to come up with this color, we could we could start out the same way as we started out with that, where we detect first of all what are we looking at. And it seems to be cooler. And as far as what value we're looking at, uh, we're looking at a value that is, you see it right here, really very light. It's pretty much the same value. Well, it's, it's kind of in between these values right here. So it's still very, very light. The sun's shining in both cases. So it's still very, very light. But it's cooler. Now, if it's cooler, if you feel it as cooler, you go to the cooler side of the color wheel. Uh, you could go on the warmer side of the color wheel and just add the cool back in. But starting with what you can detect is a good idea. Same process, value correct like we did here. Now we already have the cooler. We have ultramarine blue here, which is one of the coolest colors on the wheel, or, or on our palette. Um, and blue is the coolest of all hues. So, We've got the ultramarine blue here. We've already got it value corrected. We can start right here with what we have and check it out. You see? Now we can see, as I move it along, you can see how some areas get closer to that blue and some areas are further away. Now we can see that that blue uh, is leaning, leaning a bit more towards purple. Can you see that? It's got a little bit more red in it and it's more neutral. So we go right, just reverse just reverse go in first of all I said more purple I could go either way but I'm going to go in and pull some of the orange but this time I'm going to let the blue dominate the mixture let it be more blue or cooler you can see here when I do that how this begins to turn kind of blue blue green and that's because of the the, the orange itself the uh, the strength of the yellow in the orange so we can let's pull this one aside this so we can just start somewhere. Okay, now we can see that we really do need to add that red back in. You see that? You see we, it, it leaned more towards green. Now this is the kind of thing you can expect. That when you're mixing complements, you're going to get a bias of some sort. But the, the real, uh, um, the intelligent thing to do is to make an intelligent decision, make a scientific decision. If this is reading more green, green, red. If it's reading more blue, green, blue, green, red, orange. Always go to the complement. So I'm going to go back to the red here. And I'm going to be again to add, add a little bit more of that red back into that, uh, that blue, green. And let's see. Get another sheet of paper here. Let's see. There we are. See how very easy that was to do. Now we do see the some of that blue green. Let's get that blue green back up here. We do see some of that sort of blue green. See, it's not quite that uh, not quite that intense. It needs to have a little bit more of that red in it. But there again, you see that variation in color. That there's more uh, in the it's where the water is on top of the sand. We're seeing more of the blue green in the background here. But we're seeing more of almost completely neutral you see in this area right here and then you can see the variation in value so uh, you can take that same process go on to pixabay.com or pexels p-e-x-e-l-s i think they're probably the same company and type in ocean sand or sand by the ocean or something like that and you, you'll see some uh, photos will come up that will give you a variety of kinds of sands that you can practice with, practice this little process with, or better still, find your own sand and practice on location. You can do that on location. You can do the same thing on location by putting yourself in the same kind of light, 
taking the mixtures you put it on your on your test strip like this and just hold it up close one eye and hold it up and you'll see that comparison of the color against the color you're looking at so I think you find you will find it's just a scientific matter if you use a scientific method to mix your color an approach that takes one step at a time identify warm or cool begin with a color adjust the value then see what you have we read what you have and that tells you what the complement should be adjust the value mix it then see if it has a bias is it leaning in one direction or the other where in whatever direction it's leaning on the color wheel go to the complement and make the adjustment now, I think if you find you just do those little steps, and you can watch this over and over again to get that little sequence down, but I think you'll find if you take yourself through those steps with, regardless of the color you're mixing, you'll always come up with just the right color. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. If you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DyingMinds.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.